So now it's been a few days since I did the unboxing video and I have been fooling around trying all kinds of different things with my M1. I wanted to show you that there is nothing easier to set up than your M1. You have your USB connection here. This is a connection for power. This here is for your venting hose and all you do is there's a plastic part that comes with the with the machine that I showed you in my unboxing video and you just turn these thumb screws in to set it up. You attach the hose here, attach the clamp and then you can vent that out a window and that's what I'm doing for now until I get something a little bit more permanent set up for the winter. The weather is still nice so all I do is I put my hose out the window. It's venting that way and that's all I need to do for now. So once you have the machine hooked up, set up where you want it, all you do is turn it on. You'll see the light over here starts to flash. In a second you'll hear it start up. The light goes on on the inside and it's ready to go. So I'm going to continue on in the software now to show you how to set that up. Okay, so I'm going to start Xtool Creative Space here. And you'll see that mine is already connected so when it goes into the software right away it beeps and tells you that the machine is connected. You can see it right here. I have mine connected to Wi-Fi. You can see here that the camera is showing the bottom of the, of the machine. And if you want it to go in and change any settings, click this gear icon over here on the top right. And if you needed to change any settings, like if you need to connect your Wi-Fi, you would click over here, the settings for Wi-Fi, you'll enter um, the name of your Wi-Fi network or choose it from a list and then enter your password. It will set it up for you. It's absolutely super easy. If you're using it on USB, have your USB cable connected and it will find it for you. So mine is all set up. I'm just going to X out of this screen and I'm going to go back to the machine and just show you some of the things that I've been working on this week to play with. The first thing I cut was this circle out of the basswood and this cut cleanly in just one pass. I then tried some MDF which is a uh, pressed wood with glue in it. Um, the first time I tried to cut it, of course it didn't cut through, it's a much denser property than the basswood. So I ended up doing five passes and it cut it out, as you can see here, but I don't have the piece anymore because I brought it to my sons to show it to him. And he has it now. I also did a little bit of engraving here. All of this was super simple. So these I just created a circle within the software and cut them out. And for this, I just brought in a PNG file. The software recognized it as a bitmap and allowed me to engrave it. So when you're working with bitmap files, you can only engrave them. But if you're working with SVG files, then you can choose whether to score, cut, or engrave. So I need to take out the base plate to be able to do my project. And I'm going to show you how I do that. So I'm going to turn off the machine and I'm actually going to unplug it just to be totally safe. I'm also going to move my camera so that you can see right into the machine. So these are very tiny little screws. I'll drop the first one down below the machine, but I'll get it once I take the base plate out. And there we go, the base plate is removed. All I need to do now is set it up on the risers and it will be ready to go. In this video, I'm not going to go through any of the software functions with you. I'm just going to show you on screen some of the things that happen in the software without explaining them, just to give you an idea of the look of what's happening. But then I will show you the projects that I was working on and the results I got. Here you can see that I was working on a wooden spoon, then a wooden tray, and then a wine goblet. Here I was working on a painted wooden round. I wasn't crazy about the result, mainly because of what the wood looked like with that font, but the engraving actually worked out fine. Here I was running the percentage of black engrave test. This is the final result of that engrave test. In this clip, I'm engraving on the wooden spoon, and as you'll see from the final result, my placement wasn't very good.
And you'll see here the close-up. I'll just have to work on that. Here I'm engraving on a bamboo cutting board from Dollarama. It's a Santa board from my grandson. This turned out very, very nice. A bit more progress on the Santa board. This took about an hour to engrave. Here is the Santa board all done. Here are the close-ups of some of those projects that I worked on. So now I'm going to show you how to set up the rotary attachment. I'm going to be engraving on a wine tumbler like this, which has a slanted edge versus a straight can like this. When you're doing working on a straight can like this, you would use this attachment because this rolls evenly and that works fine. But it won't work for a tumbler that has a, a different slide, a slanted side to it like that. So what I need to do is turn it over and there are two little screws here that I need to disconnect to it, that I need to open up. I'm just using the little Allen wrench that was included with the system, with the unit. I'm using the little Allen wrench that was included with the rotary attachment. So I'm putting my screws in a cup there so that I don't lose them. Okay, so these pieces have come undone. I also need to loosen the set screws in here. Or I don't want to take them out all the way because I don't want to lose. I don't want to lose them. So there. That's them loose. I'm just going to tighten these up a little bit so that they don't get lost. So now I'm going to take this sprocket and push it into this area here. So once I've done that, I'm going to be needing this uh, belt. It goes around the, light, the uh, chuck this way and it attaches here. You take screws this size and you push them in here. And you'll see here that there are two screw holes there. And that's where this sits. And then you take the larger Allen key and you screw these into place. Okay, so now I can use these attachments to put on here to hold my cup while it's spinning. So these are the little smaller. I can attach my wine mug or my wine tumbler, I should say. So now what I need to do is use this chuck to adjust the sides. And you'll see that there are gears here, gear teeth here. And you turn it one way to open these out wider. You can see they're coming out wider. And now my mug fits in there or my tumbler fits in there. Oops. So as you keep turning it, counterclockwise, it, it, these are pushed out further. And as you turn it clockwise, they're coming in closer together to grip your tumbler or whatever you're working with. And that's pretty snug now. That's holding that really well. So I need to raise my M1 higher. I need to place it this way now. And I just make sure that the legs are in the notches of the risers here, in these notches. Then I need to attach the cable to my rotary unit and you'll see that when you have a white connector here that connects to the unit 
right over here. And you have notches in here. You just match them up. So that the notches are facing in the back, I believe. Let me just double check. It's hard to see with everything black. Okay, that's right, the notches are on the outside. And you push that in until it's secure. So I'll put the rotary attachment inside the unit. Pass the cable up from the bottom and then attach it. There. And it will be ready to go. Here you can see the rotary accessory is working. Okay, so that didn't take very long and the result is not that amazing, but it's not because of the machine. It's the cup. Um, it's a cup that I bought at Michael's and I don't know what the material is on the outside. So as I said, the rotary tool worked perfectly. The engraving did work, but it's the material. So this is not a material that can be engraved this, lot, this way. I will have to go to Walmart, pick up something else.